This is Siddhartha Alwalia. Welcome to the 100x Entrepreneur Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Prime Venture Partners, an early stage VC fund led by Amit Somani, Shripati Acharya and Sanjay Swami. Prime is often the first institutional investor in category creating tech startups in fintech, SaaS, healthcare and education such as MyGate, Quizzes, Mfine. To know more about Prime, visit primevp.in. Today I have with me Prateek Poddar, Principal at Nexus Venture Partners. Prateek joined as an associate at Nexus in 2015. Congrats Prateek on completing 5 years in Nexus. Thanks for that. Pleasure is all mine. And welcome to the 100x Entrepreneur Podcast. I was very much looking forward to this conversation. Me too. Of two reasons, particularly because of it, you know, Nexus has been performing exceptionally well. Right? It, it's been a firm which we doesn't talk often is never highlighted but this month june 2020 two of your portfolio companies have become billion dollar the the rounds in media which are circulating are postman has raised 150 million dollars at 2 billion dollar valuation and an academy is in talks to raise at 1.2 billion dollar valuation congratulations on this stupendous success uh, thanks to that uh, we are we have been lucky to work with exceptional entrepreneurs um uh, i think one unique thing about nexus is that most of our companies are product first companies and and that's the dna of the firm we just we, lo- we love founders uh, who can build platform centric businesses and who are uh, who are focused on building product first companies uh, and and that is working well for us uh, in these times your youngest principles in the vc industry i would say you have been you have a very diverse background unusual for people in vc industry most of them come from consulting backgrounds ex mckinsey but you have been an entrepreneur three times uh you have been a ex quant guy at morgan stanley ex private equity at blackstone so so first i would like to start with the the thought you know you mentioned that nexus is a very product focused vc and you like to back entrepreneurs who are product focused what what do you mean by that in in uh, depth because we we see all around us you know either there are two kind of companies in technology either service or product but placing in the second bucket every company which has a app or a b2b or a consumer focus uh, interface which they can use is a product focus company yeah to so the product in most cases for most companies is not ui ux in an e-commerce company the product is not about uh, selection and and then and then clicking buy and then paying it's about the entire experience from uh, from 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 discovery to order uh, to to post purchase to delivery to post purchase it's it's the, the entire it, it it includes the entire gamut of uh, of of things here so uh, so so when i say product first it's not about ui ux or uh, or or app based companies it's more about the fact that the entrepreneur is thinking about the customer experience at all points of time and ensuring that the product uh that ensuring that the that the that the delivery of the service is happening uh, in a scalable tech driven manner and and uh, what what does the you know uh, because for every product you are backing there are 10 other products or companies out there so what what is so special about the entrepreneurs the nexus is backing when you think they think product first if you can go deep what do what does it mean yes yeah, so uh, it's actually uh, when you when you when you when you hear about it it's not obvious but when you are in that room it's very very obvious uh, for most companies for most um, for most high quality product entrepreneurs i have met uh, during the entire discussion uh, for every problem uh, you are proposing all startups have risks so during during the discussion we'll discuss about all the risks uh, as well uh, for every problem you are proposing the thought process is very product driven and it's a it's a it's a founder skill that we truly truly crave for in most cases a lot of these guys would not be thinking about solving problem by by throwing money at it or the, by throwing people at it and i think that is a unique that is a unique trait uh, that i find in a lot of texas entrepreneurs uh, that that we love back in thanks uh, prateek for sharing that insight so let's dive deeper into the only sector which has seen a huge uptake in times of covid when everyone is advised to sit indoors and not move out of the house uh, even the lockdown has opened but today as in june we see india at fourth number 
in terms of number of covid cases and economy seems to be you know uh, not back on track i yeah. would yeah. have my argument but edtech sector is seeing a different wave or tailwind like none other sector has seen like before uh, there have been parallels to payment and demonetization but but today is is very different for edtech sector i would say the tailwinds are more stronger it's the only sector which has seen a huge inbound growth in terms of number of users as well as huge monetization so so can you uh, uh, share your thoughts on on why is that happening right now in a tech sector yeah so so i think there are there are few things that happened uh, in uh, in the ecosystem over the past 3 4 years uh, that made the timing right uh, so so it was a confluence of uh, smartphone penetration increase uh, Uh, faster internet uh, because of geo uh, payment infra- infrastructure being large enough uh, and 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 payment penetration in the country being large enough uh, so because of these reasons there was there was already a there was already a set infrastructure for education companies to grow on now because of covid of course uh, because people are people are sitting at home uh, the only way to learn is to experiment the only way to learn is to is to learn online and people have been forced to think about learning uh, online uh, and 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 when they have experimented for some time you realize that hey it's it's actually it's actually good it's it's not at all bad uh, i would argue over time people should people should think about edtech as even better than uh, the the offline education that they were getting because of uh, because of democratization of content uh, from the supply side because you can you can get the best suppliers or best supply of content uh, very easily now uh, given 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 the large the distribution of a lot of education companies and uh, as creation tools are improving and as people are learning how to create better quality content it just it just uh, you, you you probably will get a better teacher who is creating better content uh, in the online world so there's no reason for you to even think about going to the offline world so I, I, I this is this is a large social experiment that we are going through uh, and it seems to me that the experiment is is the results of the experiment is clear that that online learning is as good or perhaps better as offline learning and 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 so we should shift we should see a massive shift uh, in the perce- in the perception of how people think about online education so nexus has a a huge view on it tech and that's why we see a number of portfolio companies so can you take our listeners through the portfolio companies of nexus in edtech sector We are the first investors in an academy, which started as a live learning platform for test prep, and later expanded into K twelve um, and and other categories. Um, we are early investors in White Hat Junior, uh, which is a K seven uh, education company where you are teaching coding uh, or logical reasoning to kids. Uh, we are the we are early investors in Quizzes, which is a global tool for teachers to. uh to 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 engage with students better uh and and they are present uh, across many many uh, schools in uh, in south east asia us and now in india as well uh, we are investors in newton school uh, which is which is a, a upskilling slash reskilling company uh, where you teach coding uh, to college graduates and make them employable uh, and 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 high quality uh, coders for companies to hire and we are investors in turtles uh, in in talent spring which is a Uh, which is a upskilling company uh, where uh, where people in the people in the people who are already doing jobs and they want to reskill and upskill and 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 get better jobs or 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 do better in their uh, in their company uh, can learn um, and and acquire acquire job ready skills so 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 we are investors in 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 lots of education companies across the uh, stack um, and and this is this is coming this is working out well for us especially in these times so uh, uh, as you shared you know uh, an academy is one of the leading test prep and uh, right now entering into k12 segments in india so can can you share about some traction numbers of an academy where are they right now and in terms of monthly revenues where are they yeah so um, an academy uh, started monetizing i think in february last year february march last year uh, and they have grown sign- very fast and i think now they are doing about 100 crores uh, a month booking uh, which is which is phenomenal it's it's, it's perhaps the uh, perhaps the second largest 
revenue generating company a tech company in the country so so yearly if we amortize that like 1200 crores of yearly revenue from here on and i believe it will be much more this yeah. is what you are reporting yeah. current month or the last yeah. month yeah uh, and uh, the test prep sector in india particularly which an academy has been able to crack it and they are even anthem is less crack it uh, has has been one of the, the largest sectors in india like bansal classes in kota for iit chanakya in delhi for is allen for medical uh, net exams can can you throw some light on this sector when before it was getting replaced or disrupted by edtech companies how big was this sector if you can show some numbers on it yeah so reports say that uh, test prep market in india is a 8 to 10 billion dollar market and you may mention a lot of names and there are there are other there are other names for other exams and uh, as well and and there are many decently sized city based state based companies here so at the end of the, at the end of the day it's a very local business um, and and people people travel from across the country but but at the end of the day uh, a lot of times it's very it's very concentrated in in one city or two cities or three cities um, so, so so at the end of the day uh, we have to we the way i think about it is a lot of exams that we have in the country are really a gateway for middle class or lower middle class people to get opportunities and that is why everyone in india is trying to either become a uh, become become a civil servant or um, or or get into uh, get into um, uh, the top engineering colleges the top medical colleges um, uh, ca and so on so all these so so there is huge demand for preparing for these tests because this is seen as a way uh, this is seen as a ticket uh, out of uh, out of uh, uh, out of uh, lower middle class middle class upper middle class to 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 transcend orbits uh, in socio economic status now the challenge i the challenge we always felt and i i went to one of the top coaching institutes um, in in kota uh, for uh, for preparation uh, for je uh so you when you, when you when you step into that world you realize that there is a clear caste system uh, uh, all of us took an exam based on the marks in that exam you are divided into different classes uh, and although all of us are paying the same amount of fees the person who got better marks is getting access to more motivated teacher and is sitting with more motivated students uh, and and uh, and of course then he has a higher chance of success than 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 people um, who who did not get that opportunity now uh, in in true sense edtech just breaks all that shackles uh, and broken experience uh, which 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 was which which did not make sense uh, over time uh, as as the markets are expanding the the supp- new supply is very get, is is getting created earlier if you had to teach you had to go to these if you were good at teaching uh, and and you know the concept Uh, you have to go to one of these uh, one of these coaching institutes to teach and then only impart knowledge but now you could you could sit at your home and teach students and which which you which you anyways love uh, so 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 suddenly the the market has expanded because of because education has now been made accessible and affordable uh, which has led to new supply creation which just expands the market uh, phenomenally but but there is the argument that Uh, in edtech because of scale is to one is to 1000 uh, one teacher to 1000 students in a batch uh, in live classes especially there is no personal attention like they used to be in offline classes at bansal because you have been at bansal i have been at bansal for <laughs> iit je preparation where the batch sizes are 6200 and a teacher could see in the student eyes how do you replace that is, is it replaceable or uh, are we just ignoring that part so yeah so that I, the way i think about it is that it's it's the it's not it's not right for us to compare one on one here because so the way i think about it is bansal uh, when in bansal class when you had 60 students in in one room i'm not sure if if the teacher was able to talk to every student anyways uh, and in top batches the attention was of course better but as you go down in the uh, in the in the value chain you will realize that that the experience was definitely not as good 
in in a lot of these um, in a lot of these tech companies where one is to 500 one is to one is to thousands one is to thousand um, um, uh, learning is happening uh, it's not that it's only content where one is to thousand learning is happening you have tas and mentors who are helping you learn as well so it is it is really the, the paradigm of education then changes that the lecturer is different from uh, from from uh, doubt solver to is different from mentor uh, which uh, which uh, which is effectively unbundling of the different roles that the teacher standing uh, on the podium in the offline coaching institutes were doing uh, and that is why uh, the experience here could actually be better because you are learning from the best teacher who knows how to teach who has who has deep understanding of the subject and pedagogy while uh, for solving your uh, doubts or for getting that personal attention or 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 learning about that nuances it can be done uh, by a more uh, by a more demo, by a more uh, distributed uh, set of teachers uh, and 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 that model perhaps is is better model the other aspect here is uh, based on top of these platforms you could do peer to peer learning you could do uh, better assessment uh, and uh, and and you could you would have real time feedback on the class and the concepts so again because of technology we are able to expand the gamut significantly more and not just focus on the uh, focus on uh, focus on um, uh, focus on uh, the the small class and 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 trying to deliver on that in that paradigm so as you as you shared you know uh, earlier in the podcast like uh, an academy is doing 100 crores in monthly revenue Uh, when did it become mainstream for consumers to pay for education on mobile when did when did this shift happen it's a very sudden shift and people don't believe that this has already happened and and what 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 where is it going from here hmm. yeah so interestingly i would argue we are we are still on the uh, still at uh, still at day zero here uh, of course because of as we discussed because of improved smartphone penetration improved uh, internet penetration payment infrastructure etc uh there there is some shift uh but 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 if you take a 30000 feet view you will see that well well the 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 total pen, the total penetration of a tech in the test prep market is is maybe less than less than 2.5% less than 3% uh because well, the total market is about 8 to 10 billion dollars and uh, and and a tech uh, in test prep would be perhaps 200 million dollars type uh, uh when you when you look at k12 uh, you will see that the penetration is perhaps um, is is this less than 4 5% uh, uh, so 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 we 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 know that 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 there's a there's a long road ahead and 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 as we discussed earlier the market size expansion will also happen so so this is really day zero um, and and we are just sh- just seeing the early rockers right now and uh, i strongly believe that in the in the next 5 10 years uh we should see multiple 5 billion dollar 10 billion dollar revenue companies coming out of india um uh, in education uh because uh, because because this is the need of the hour and and we have we, we we don't have the fundamental infrastructure uh created by uh created by private companies or by the government so a lot of value that will be captured will be captured by 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 startups um and and entrepreneurs working on in this space fantastic uh, you know gorov has been on the podcast though we see him as an entrepreneur right now like one of the best entrepreneurs in the country today but back then uh, you know i can only imagine from your conversation what it would have been like to 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 sit in the same room and try to whether we should do the deal or not do the deal you know there was there was a limited question it was more about uh, it, it was more about Uh, how can we close the deal uh, it was never about whether we should do the deal or not so coming on to your next portfolio which is doing very well white hat junior it was recently in the media that they are raising a 50 million dollar round can you share how, how did you discover white hat how did you develop thesis because it's a very unconventional sector they, they they were not replacing anything in the industry and academy was replacing the the offline iit coaching test coaching and now k12 but Uh, white hat is, is a new concept uh, how did you uh, came in touch with the founder what were your thesis when you invested uh, again when you meet karan you you will understand 
his 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 aggression uh and uh, uh and uh, and uh, you you can see that he'll deliver to he will deliver with speed and precision so when when we were chatting about uh, about white hat for the first time um and again it was an idea stage company um we the, the, the discussion was more around uh, a building the team around karan because uh, because at that point of time he was the single founder uh, who had just started the company um, and b uh, it was around where this can go uh, because there could be uh, there, there is a there is a real uh, risk that this could be a, a niche a rich people uh, prop uh, and while we were uh, iterating on the idea with karan uh we unearth that that the market is is yet to be created there is a lot of latent demand uh that um, latent demand in the market and when you are talking to people you are getting a sense that this is this is one course that they want to take for their kids uh and you could also see that there is an appetite to pay and the third thing uh is that there is no second best alternative now when 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 when, when these things are there there is you you know that there is a potential to expand the market if you can create a right offering and karan being a, a superb uh, marketer and superb operations guy uh, you could uh, we, we we had detailed discussions and very deep discussions around 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 how do you convince the parent how do you convince the student um, what is the what is the mindset uh, that the that the student has what what would his, what would be his priority Uh, how do you how do you ensure a delight how do you give a delightful experience uh, to the uh, to the student uh, and and how would the parent who is the who is really the pair uh, think about it it's just it's just trying to get deeper into the skin of the value prop uh, and and uh, and and education fundamentally is a high margin business uh, because at the end of the day you are selling aspiration you are selling hope uh, and 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 uh, as as we have been working with karan over the past uh, 18 months or so uh, our confidence in the company has only grown our confidence in his execution ability has only grown um, and 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 the question uh, around around uh, around the around the the, the demand uh, constraint is not even discussed because we have learned that it's a supply constrained market uh, and you just have to create high quality teachers uh and 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 if if because your experience is 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 superb uh students will talk about it with their friends and the market expansion happens drastically uh in such a market where uh, where uh, where there's there's too late into market so at what stage was the company when you invested whether it was just current building a prototype or he had some users and what was your first check like in the company uh he had just quit the job uh and he was iterating on the idea so there was no product uh, no experiment no no team he was just one person trying to think of an idea uh, and 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 for many of our companies um, turtlement and paysense uh, and many of our companies we have done that and uh, and it has been it has been phenomenal for us and, and it was i believe followed by a 10 million dollar check uh... Uh, so so we collected a series a round uh, with uh, with aul and omidyar uh, after uh, after the company showed uh, some traction and there was product market fit and and we were able to build a very very high quality team uh, around karan and that is one thing that 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 i am so i am amazed by two things that karan have done karan has done in the past one and a half years one is he has built a superb high quality team around him i it's just amazing that in that such a early stage company uh is able to hire and and build such a such a rock star team uh and the second is the 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 aggression uh and the and the speed of uh, of operation uh, so so we are we are we are we are lucky early investors and and pradeep can, can you t- tell us about the ticket size of white hat junior what is charging a parent and who are these parents like which income group do they belong to are they the top 1% top 5% of india what's their average monthly income like yeah so uh, so just to give you some market landscape uh, there are 22 million uh, kids in the country who pay more than 30000 rupees a month uh, to school fees the education market size is increasing faster 
than you and I would be imagine would imagine. The the appetite to pay is increasing faster than you and I can imagine. As the incomes are rising, the most impacted expense uh, out of pocket is education for 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 a lot of people. Because as we discussed, that's the way for people. That's the that's an aspirational spend, um, and and all of us have grown to learn uh, that education will uh, will will create uh, riches for us. As we're discussing that the total number of people who so 22 million people you shared that they are, they are they are paying 30000 rupees per month for their school uh, kids education in school ha ah, so 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 the market for white hat is really is really across the board uh, uh, we have students we have we have about 50 60% uh, parents from tier 1 cities uh, while while others from tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, we have uh, we have people coming on coming from we have we have we have kids who are who are who are we have, we, have, we have people coming on uh, from uh, from from uh, business backgrounds uh, from 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 salary class from government jobs uh, so so it's across the board uh, and at least today we are we are not seeing and 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 from our from our perspective there is clear demand because a lot of these guys want their kids to get the unique skills which get them which gets them a leg up in their career and 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 so there is no there is no uh, there is no uh, there is no fixed pattern that this is the customer segment that will work and the other is not others will not work uh, and 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 there is huge huge demand it's a really supply constrained market right now and it, it must be tough to you know get trained computer and programming teachers i believe in a country like india where everybody aspires to be a software developer yes yeah, so that's the beauty of of the of the of the product that the technology enables you uh, to learn without getting deep without learning from deep software programmers so the the teachers that are that are that are there on white hat are super successful at what they are doing uh, because they have the empathy they have the they have the curiosity they have the hunger but but the the skill set required uh, around around content uh, and domain uh can be acquired because of the technology layer and the content layer by hat provides uh, and that is the that is the beauty uh, of the model and that is where i i i say that that the market expansion happens because the supply has now been democratized uh, and usually a parent starts their kid in a by hat course when they are in the 7th class no no it's uh, majority so it is it is from class 2nd to class 7th class first to class seven types uh, and it is almost evenly distributed so uh, it's actually uh, it's actually very early in their in their journey uh, and the pitch to the parent is that earlier your kid was playing games now he would make games um, would you want your kid to be the ceo uh, at, when he's 13 uh, and 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 what the kid really learns is he gets a, he he gets to build something for the first time you know you and i did perhaps did it much later but the first time you build something with your hands it's just magical and the the way you think about life changes uh, when you start building things because because you suddenly feel that you have got this power that you can actually affect things and not just consume uh, and and that is what white hat potentially provides to the uh, to a lot of kids and i personally the way i the, the way i think about it that if uh, if even if even if a few percentage points of students become lifelong builders because they would they got access to such a course when they were young we have created real value uh, in the in the world uh, because because we will have so many builders uh, uh, created out of the system because it's just that they they were exposed to uh, such such high quality um, high quality workshops and experiences early on in their lives and is white hat opening up to other streams also besides computer programming Yeah, so uh, the the intent is always to capture the higher order thinking space, uh, and uh, uh, and it just business wise as well. It just makes logical sense uh, that 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 uh, that uh, it's it's an easy way to expand into other categories and either upsell um, and cross sell to the same student or uh, because it's a it's it's a it's a family decision 
uh, one 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 kid might be interested in one course, while the other kid might be interested in another course. But, but so so they will expand into other categories uh, like robotics, space, etc. Uh, but but the intent is to be very very focused and and make sure that everything we launch, we deliver high quality uh, experience to the parent and the kid, and and then pace is super super high. So we do not want to uh, we do not want to spread ourselves too thin, and it just and ensured that every class uh, and uh, every class is a phenomenal experience for the kid. So co- com- coming back to the edtech sector, when you have shared so much insights about uh, your portfolio companies, you know you shared about different buckets in in edtech. One one is the student from uh, the second class to seventh class, how how they are seeing edtech, and their parents in India are seeing edtech. And even in recently published uh, interviews with Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google, he said that his dad spent his one year salary yeah, in that. sending him to US. That that's like a eye opener for parents. That you know, if if they they are already investing, but but what can it do? You know, the education do from a lower middle class to to becoming CEO of one of the largest companies in the world today. What can and I think I, I, the entire I totally agree. and and I it, totally agree. It, it it empowers Indian parents so much. You know what what they couldn't achieve through their lifetime, their kids could because of education. I totally agree. In fact, you know, again, it's not about being the CEO of Google. I can I I'm sure you would have also gone through the same journey, so that that uh, that that both of us, whatever whatever we have done in life, whatever small we have done in life uh, till now. Uh, it, it is, it is not small, uh, considering uh, where where we started from. Um, no, and, I started from and, a city called Meerut. If, if yes, yes, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tier two, tier three town near Delhi. I got educated in Meerut. After twelfth, I spent one year in Kota. Yeah, yeah. So, so all of us, all of us at all levels have been have been pushed across orbits and have explored things that. Our parents or our, uh, you know, our elder, elder brothers and sisters did not have an opportunity to explore because we could, we could, uh, we could ride on the education uh, curve and and get and and create opportunities for us that was not there for everyone and and that's why education is a great equalizer uh, that that uh, someone like Sundar who come from a, a humble background could become the CEO of Google uh, and and at in our own ways, it's true for both you and me as well. Uh, that that we are able to do because uh, we are able to do stuff because of the education we could we could get uh, and 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 what we were able to build out of it. So, boy, just to take a pause there, I would love to share with our listeners your background, which city do you come from, and and your family background. What does your father did, used to do or does? So, uh, I was born in Patna. Uh, majority of my family uh, is is still in Patna. Uh, we are we as a as a family uh, we we come from Rajasthan. Uh, Poddar uh, is is Sandhi of Potendar, and we are originally ship traders. Poddar means ship traders, and uh, we we are we are from Rajasthan. Uh, but but a lot of us shifted to uh, Patna uh, about 40 50 years back, and and I was born in Patna, um, and and did my early education there, uh, and then I uh, then the family moved to Jaipur, uh, and uh, where I did my uh, where I completed my uh, high school and um, and uh, and uh, um, and uh, and uh, my 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 father is a uh, businessman uh, like uh, everyone in my family so we are a, we are a joint family uh, across the board uh, we are 55 brothers and sisters um, and most most of my family members are businessmen um, running shops running factories um, having trading uh, agencies and so on. Very early on, again, I was privileged that way that most of them started uh, working in the shops uh, when they were very young. So when you're in class 10th, 11th, uh, you go to school and uh, and you go to uh, and you complete your degree, uh, but you start going to the gaddi uh, and and you start learning uh, the tricks of the trade. Uh, because I was too studious. Uh, when I was very young, um, and uh, uh, and and because I had the opportunity, uh, given given the family had started to do significantly uh, better uh, by the time I was I, I was I was 
um, I was in class eight, ninth. Uh, I had the opportunity and the freedom to explore uh, other things, and and that's why. And I I I loved maths then. Uh, it uh, I could I, I, when I was in when I when I was in class sixth, I would complete the books of class the math book of class seventh, uh, and and I would just get uh, I just get the fun out of it. Uh, so 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 so. Uh, so i i was i was i i wanted to do i wanted to be an engineer when you when 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 you were told that if you like maths then you should be an engineer uh, and and that's how my journey out of the the traditional business family uh, started um, of course after after my engineering and after working as a quant for some time i went i tried to go back to my roots and try to build a business but looks like uh, it was it was too difficult for me then uh and uh, and 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 i'm back to the professional side since last 5 years working at nexus uh so yeah to uh, you know it like uh, for many people like what the sector which we are talking about education change your life completely if if you are not interested in you know maths and science you would still be sitting at your gaddi yeah <laughs> thank you uh, pratik for, for sharing personal an- anecdotes and coming back you know to our conversation so so there is the sector you know which white hat has focused on from class 2 to class 7 the uh, adding programming skills and allowing children children to build something first time in their life then there are the, your portfolio company focused on 11 12 iit j and other test preps uh, what what are the some other sectors which you think they have still some you know or a large opportunity in india but entrepreneurs have not been able to crack in a tech so uh, so that the way uh, so i i break the sector into into different verticals one would be k7 plus pre school which is about very young kids the motivation at when you are very young is not about getting marks or it's a, or is not about uh, getting a job it is about it is from the parent side to 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 manage kids better Uh, and to grow their thinking better um uh, uh from k7 to k k7 to k12 it is a lot about marks and and outcomes in the school exams uh, and at some level uh, uh developing skills uh, for them to uh, shine in the real world when they graduate towards it uh the the next level is about uh, the end of k12 and post college it's a lot about test prep uh, which is which as we discussed is a large market uh, and and the fourth segment is continuing education uh, that after you have graduated how do you continue uh, to to evolve your skills and learn and and grow in your career so in my mind a lot of work has been done on k7 to k12 uh, and test prep uh, and 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 we can we can now clearly see that large companies will get created um, in a tech space in these two verticals i think there is a lot of opportunity in k6 k7 and uh, in the in the continuing education space which has not been captured as much yet uh, and and i'm super excited about that so in the first vertical uh, the the constraints i put uh, on myself is uh, it has to be outcome driven uh, although it is for kids the kid should feel that he has he has built something or he has learned something and the parents should also feel that that there is some real outcome associated with the learning uh, otherwise this might this might not be the popular opinion but in my mind for most people if you are not giving uh, structured output then it becomes entertainment and entertainment has value but then monetization would would take a different route and the outcome expected uh, and the and the job to be done would be very different and so it will be it should be considered different but if you are thinking of yourself as an education company then the focus on outcome has to be there uh, for sure uh, and uh, and and in my mind a lot of again this is this is this is personal bias and it might be might not be the popular opinion that people do not pay for content as much but people pay for learning people pay for the package uh, and 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 it's like the way the way i think about it is that how much money you have spent on books over the past 15 20 years uh, of of your of your of your education um, versus how much money did you spend on schools and colleges 
the 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 mindset is very different when you're spending on learning uh, and that is why uh, that is why the profit pools exist there uh, so so with these constraints in mind uh, super excited about both curricular and extracurricular verticals uh, for case now and on continuing education uh, i think see as if and on continuing education there is tremendous value in professionals learning and upskilling on the on the for, for their current job or for their job shifts and you know uh, every everyone talks about it that the only thing constant uh, in the current world is change and because the markets are continuously changing you always have to be at the top of your game you always have to be willing to uh, reskill and and change careers um, and that is where continuing education comes uh, comes very handy um, and and in my mind that market is also uh, that market will also expand over time as we get higher quality uh, higher quality pedagogy and higher quality output uh, delivered across different verticals in my mind almost surely both the both, in almost surely companies in both k6 and continuing continued education would be very vertical focused to begin with that you will deliver high quality output for one vertical whether it's whether it's coding learning as as you are as you are going in your job so 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 you would you would so you would you are you are uh, so, so, so almost surely they'll start vertical first and then eventually become uh, become more horizontal and create a brand and become give a more holistic experience across different verticals uh, but but to begin with we focused on one vertical output driven uh and 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 able to create actionable uh outcomes uh, and rois for the uh, for the people uh, paying money for it so uh, correct me if i'm wrong here uh, so once a kid enters college there are not many edtech companies serving for for that person between 18 to 22 or they are not known yet if they are building No, there are lots. So there are lots of companies uh, working in that category. So there are a lot of B two B companies uh, which are providing. There are there are a lot of technology companies providing software for colleges. Uh, the the second level is there are a lot of B two B services companies, uh, whether it's a brand or whether it's whether it's B two B two C or whether it's uh, whether it's pure B two B as a white label. Uh, like there are different there are different models, but there are a lot of companies enabling college. colleges to provide higher quality education uh, and uh, and uh, there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a very uh, interesting model where you could provide live education uh, or recorded education but online to students in a college because the the challenge with many existing colleges is the supply of high quality teachers is not there so you could provide education on the um, uh, on on a screen uh while uh, there could be tas uh, and and mentors in the class who could who could help the uh, students grasp learning faster and the advantages of the offline world which is peer to peer learning uh, structured uh, offline time based um, for, forcing function that all of you are together in one room um, and and the camaraderie and the uh, and the uh, and the life skills you learn by being in 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 one room and um, and and staying in a hostel all of that uh, can also be embedded while removing the the barrier of not being able to get high quality supply of teachers uh, so so i'm sure there are there are many many interesting models out there and i've met lots of interesting companies in diff, uh, following different models uh, for and 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 we should we we could see uh, large companies being created uh, in that space as well but 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 but, but, but from my perspective uh, the reason i i picked k6 and continuing education above that is that in many cases selling to colleges has not been as easy uh, because most of them uh, because the governance structure in a lot of colleges are very convoluted uh, but but hey uh, entrepreneurs will 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 create uh, companies despite the challenges and and when we see signs of that then 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 then, then maybe my perspective on the uh, on the on the order of the uh, success of the uh, spaces might change we might see a nexus company 
in that space in coming years and uh, you have neutral school which serves like uh, after college for students those yeah. or, or even professionals those who want to come into coding or enhance their coding skills yeah. and it's more outcome driven yeah. they are charged uh, as, uh, after they get placed yeah do you do you yeah. see that becoming a billion dollar space in india yeah so you know so this is a unique uh, space and unique opportunity because there is there is very very high uh, supply of people who want to learn see i think 6.5 million people graduate out of colleges in india every year uh, but the number of uh, number of new white collar jobs being created every year is maybe maybe less than 10% of that uh, so unlike us where the college education is not a compulsory thing in in people's mind in india many folks try and go to colleges and so the supply is high but most colleges are not able to impart job skills to to people and after you are graduating you are not ready for a uh, for a for a white collar job now that leads to a, a a gap in the market where can you create high quality education service for them where you are unbundling all the other experiences of college but just taking out the 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 the, the vertical where you are helping students uh, learn the skills that are required to be successful in the job uh, and newton school is catering to that, that 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 supply on the demand side the demand for software engineers is increasing super fast and we do, do not have we do not have enough supply in the country in fact the global demand is also increasing very fast while while the supply of talent pool across the world is a challenge and as remote work becomes the uh, becomes a new standard uh, the job the software jobs in india will actually increase even more now in that scenario newton school is 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 positioned right to capture a supremely large supply very high demand market which just needs uh, a layer of education assessment uh, and 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 training in between uh, and and to make that matching happen uh, on the on the isa bit i don't think it is the definition of the of the of the problem and the solution it's just a better monetization solution and it defines it it ensures that the alignment between the two parties happen uh, and 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 the for for content or for or, or even for learning when you do not know whether the other party is incentivized to get you a job or not uh, you would not pay more than 15 20 25000 30000 rupees uh, but 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 when we are talking about the the company taking the risk that the guy will get a job and the company delivering on its promises because of this high uh, high quality pedagogy and high quality um a hiring uh, network uh, then 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 you can extract significant more value maybe 5x or 10x of that and that's where i think the that's that's the that's the new innovation that has happened uh, across the world but in my mind i say is just is just one payment instrument and i'm sure uh, a lot of these companies would evolve uh, new different different payment structures for different levels of students and multiple very large companies should get created in this space Uh, because the demand and supply are both very very large thank you so much prateek for, for for sharing that insight and coming towards the conclusion of the podcast you know uh, what are the qualities you know if because you have invested in so many edtech companies and uh, seeing a huge amount of success what are the qualities you know if you can uh, uh, share the, that you are looking for in edtech entrepreneurs who are solving in edtech like one you already shared that they have to be product focused any other insights which you have which which will be useful for our listeners this is i agree we have been super super bullish on uh, education um, as a space um, i often say this that education is one market which has both scale and monetization some some verticals have space some verticals have monetization uh, but education is one vertical uh, which which is which is phenomenal that way and i truly believe that we should see multiple multi billion dollar revenue companies being created out of uh, created in education out of india and and i also make this argument often that um, in us uh, the edtech companies are catering to a very thin sliver uh, of the market because of the existence of public and private infrastructure of education uh, in india 
the entrepreneurs are creating uh, are really creating their infrastructure from bottoms up uh, full stack uh, and and that is and that is why phenomenal value will be captured in, in india uh, like it has happened in china uh, because 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 there's infinite demand uh, and and that's the way um, because, because there's very very bad, because there's very high demand uh, and and there is no existing infrastructure now when we look at uh, education entrepreneurs as you mentioned we we think about the product first uh, approach and the uh, and and the scalability of the model you know it's not as easy to get customers love because at the end of the day from a customer's perspective there are almost always many options for him and we look for that maniacal focus and customer obsession for creating high quality uh, experience by 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 the by the, founder, by the founder and a lot of it is about positioning and creating the package uh, which which is easily consumable uh, for the parent and the kid uh, so so we 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 try and iterate and brainstorm on those aspects uh, a lot a lot more uh, 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 we try and brainstorm on those aspects a lot the other aspect that we that we want to that the other the other thing that we discuss a lot is around uh, the focus on outcomes and observable outcomes uh, because it is important that 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 there is some goal associated with education for people to be willing to pay and and how does the founder understand the nuances of the demand and the third aspect is it requires a very complementary team in most cases it's a lot about uh content sometimes marketing operations it's a very complicated business that way uh because because you have to be great at multiple uh things uh so how does the founder think about building a team can he build a high quality team and would the team sustain through tough times these are the these are the these are some of the questions we often ask uh at at the highest level uh we think we we when we evaluate any investment we look at market uh we look at approach and look at team uh in most cases it's team first uh so 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 we talked about 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 the customer obsession of the founder uh, uh, on the team front uh, markets in general are either large in education or if not in my mind a lot of times market get created and and i am happy to have a discussion on how that would happen so bookish market size is perhaps the wrong number to look at uh, when you are evaluating ed- education companies we are we are we are uh, we are more bullish on i i actually advise entrepreneurs often to to be a leader in a very small market but have the beachhead to be the best in that market and either expand that market or then uh, get into allied markets and 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 capture a large category uh, from some uh, other player uh, but but it's important to have focus and be the winner in your category because number 2 will almost always surely get poorer quality customers and would have it more difficult to to build the company yeah thank you so much prateek it's been wonderful to have you on the podcast thank you for sharing your experience insights and and your journey working with edtech entrepreneurs my my pleasure siddharth thank you for taking the time thank you for inviting me and it was super uh, chatting with you uh, and and we have been surely lucky uh, over the past few years investing in super high quality entrepreneurs uh, who are on the path to building very large companies Uh, and it would be great for the ecosystem thank you very much